This video tape will show you how the butt welder is operated to join saw blades into a continuous loop for use on the band saw. The butt welder, or band welder as it is commonly called, serves two very useful purposes in the machine shop. It saves money by having blade welding done in the shop. And it allows the band saw to be a more versatile machine. After viewing this video tape, you will be able to describe the safety procedures used in any machine shop when working with a band welder, identify the parts of a band welder and describe their function, and write down the steps you would follow in welding a band saw blade into a loop for a particular machine. Begin by observing the routine machine shop safety precautions of removing your jewelry, rolling up your sleeves above the elbows, and putting on your safety glasses. For band welding, you will need safety glasses with side shields to protect your eyes from flying sparks as the weld is made. If your safety glasses are not equipped with side shields, then you must wear an approved face mask during the welding operation. To be able to operate the band welder, you must know the following parts and their functions. The blade shear. This is used for cutting blades to length from rolled band stock. You can also use the blade shear to cut a continuous loop blade which is on the machine. You would cut a continuous loop blade to make inside cuts by inserting one end of the blade through the hole in the workpiece and then re-welding the blade together again. The width selector is set to the width of the blade to be welded. The welding and annealing jaws they hold the blade in the proper position for both the welding operation and the annealing operation. The annealing operation, which is performed immediately after welding, takes the brittleness out of the welded area, thus making it less liable to break when it is bent. The blade clamps tighten the movable jaws when the blade is placed between them. The weld lever moves the jaws together to complete the welding action on the blade. Before placing the blade in the jaws for welding, you should be careful to place the lever at the same width as the width of the blade you are welding. The annealing switch is used to anneal the weld area after welding. The band weld grinder is used to grind off the buildup of material at the weld and finish it to the same thickness as the rest of the blade. This is a necessary operation if the weld is to pass through the band guides without binding. The weld grinding gauge is used in checking the weld thickness to see that it is the same thickness as the rest of the blade. Having seen the parts of the band welder, you will now be shown the steps in preparing a saw blade for use on the band machine. The first step is to determine the length of blade you will need for the machine you are using. On most machines, there is a data plate attached which supplies this information. For this machine, you will need a blade of 125 inches. If the length of blade information is not posted on the machine, you can calculate this blade length by using the formula. Blade length is equal to pi times the diameter of the band wheel plus two times the distance between band wheel centers. The diameter of this band wheel is 16 inches, and the distance between centers of the band wheel is 37.5 inches. Therefore, using the formula to calculate blade length, you have blade length is equal to 3.14 times 16, plus two times 37.5 which is equal to 125 inches of blade. The next step is cutting a length of blade 125 inches from a roll of stock. Use a tape measure to lay out the length. In many shops, specified lengths or dimensions are placed on convenient surfaces so that one person is able to handle the measuring operation. Mark the blade length on the blade stock. 
Next, use the blade shear to cut the blade to length. You must be careful that the blade is aligned against the shear guides. Apply a quick snap of the shear handle to assure a cut that is square to the back of the blade. Now hold one end of the blade in each hand and twist the blade so the back of one blade end is aligned to the teeth of the other blade end. Place the sheared ends of the blade against a grinding wheel to get both ends of the blade in the same plane. This will assure alignment of the blade ends when they are placed in the jaws for welding. The next step is to set the weld selector for the width of the blade you are welding. This provides the correct amount of power for welding the blade. Set the weld lever for the blade width. Remember, this must be done before the blade is positioned in the jaws, since the lever controls the movement of the jaws for welding. Clean the jaws and place one end of the blade in each jaw. You should be especially careful that the blade is properly aligned in the jaw and the back of the blade aligned with the guide in the back of the jaw. The blade ends should extend approximately one half the distance between the two jaws. Tighten the blade clamp and recheck to see that the blade ends are not offset or overlapping. Next is the actual welding of the ends of the blade. Be careful when depressing the weld lever as sparks sometimes will occur. Depress the weld lever and keep it depressed until one of the blade clamps is released. The blade is now welded. It is best to anneal the weld area before grinding. Set the weld lever to anneal and reclamp the blade in the front of the jaws. Then, depress the annealing switch and keep it depressed until the welded area reaches a dull red. Then slowly cool the weld area by releasing and depressing the annealing switch until the dull red color has disappeared from the weld area. Now remove the blade from the jaws and grind the weld to the thickness of the blade. The blade weld grinder is designed to grind on both the bottom and the top of the wheel. This allows you to grind both sides of the weld without having to turn the loop inside out. Finally, Check the blade thickness at the weld area with the weld grinding gauge. You should not remove any more metal than is necessary to reach the proper blade thickness. You may anneal the blade again after the grinding operation. This second annealing will eliminate any hardness which may be induced by grinding. The dull red color will show up very clearly on the ground surface. The finished blade is now ready for use on the band machine or it may be stored for future use. There are some special techniques in coiling blades for storage to prevent them from getting kinked. One method is to place your foot on the blade with your hand at the top. Twisting your hand while moving it down allows the blade to coil as it moves down. This produces loops of smaller diameters making it easier for handling and storage. Another method of coiling the blade is to hold the blade in front of you with both hands. In one continuous motion, turn your hands in and down, letting the outer diameter of the blade flip down at the same time. This method works well with narrower width blades. In review, you should now be able to describe the safety procedures used when working with a band welder, identify the parts of the band welder and describe their function, and write down the steps you would follow in welding a bandsaw blade for use on a particular machine. Mastering the technique of welding bandsaw blades requires continued practice. However, the time spent in learning will be repaid in making you a more competent machinist.